Welcome to Bible study at Our Lady of the Wayside. This is, we're about to have the fourth Sunday of Easter. Right. Do you remember what it was like to get to the fourth Sunday of Lent, mm -hmm. where we get to look through, look at Lent through rose-colored vestments and think, oh good, it's almost half over. <laughs> and, and here's the Easter season zooming by. And so why is it that Easter just zooms by while Lent seems to take day by day, you know, the Lenten journey. Uh, maybe what we need are some tag, tag lines for the Easter season. In Lent, we think about uh, prayer and fasting and almsgiving. And if Lent was a good Lent, we have probably all got some new good habits of prayer. We probably have exercised a little more self-discipline during this season of, of spring cleaning and spring training. And uh, it's odds are good that we enjoyed the pleasure of charity and are continuing to do that. Well, what kind of uh, taglines can we have for the Easter season? What came to mind for me were the three themes, three of the themes that are in today's read, the readings we're going to study today. And the first one is creativity. The second one is childlikeness. And the third one is um, costume or closed consciousness. I tried to figure out C's for them all. In the first reading, we're going to see Peter reminding us that everything has been turned upside down. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Death has been canceled out by victory. Death has canceled, Jesus's death has con canceled out our sentence of death. Um, when we've been we've been seeing Jesus's playfulness all through the Easter season, he's he has been having so much fun, just sort of popping up, you know, meeting people on the road. Hey, what are you guys talking about? Are you the only person who doesn't know what's been going on in Jerusalem? Have you been under a rock this whole weekend? Oh, tell me what's going on, mm -hmm. says Jesus. And then, you know, seven miles later, he makes himself known by the breaking of the bread. Is he having fun or what? Then he pops up appearing to his disciples a few minutes later. By the time the other guys have trekked and there's all the seven miles back to town, Jesus shows up at the same time. Uh, hello there. Now, would you like to see my hands and feet? Uh, be believing. You know, and he is just blowing their minds and he is having such fun doing it. And so we see his playfulness. And then in this, in our first reading, we're going to see Peter just exhibiting a level of courage you would never have expected from Peter, from all you know about Peter. Last week, we talked about a couple of aspects of childlikeness, and we're going to be reminded about childlikeness again in the middle reading. And the, think about some of the games that you know, thinking about Jesus having fun. Think about some of the games that a good father plays with his children. The first one is peekaboo. Does God ever play that with you? Do you ever find God hiding in some aspect of life where you didn't expect it? Another of the games that the child enjoys with the father is hide and seek. Um, my daughter likes to play hide and seek with her children. She says it's her excuse to, to stand behind a door and look at her phone. <laughs> but God likes to play hide and seek with us. He invites us, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Then last week we talked about the obedience and th that a child learns. And our discussion, we said, what are some of the you know, commandments that we obey? And the first commandments that come to all of our minds are some of the Ten Commandments. Don't steal. Don't uh, have sex out of marriage. Don't bear false witness. Don't covet. But when you look at the Gospels, there are a lot more commandments that we tend to overlook. And the Easter season is leading up to Jesus's great commandment. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. That's Jesus' big new commandment. But he also has a whole bunch of other commandments, such as don't be afraid. 
He says that rather often. Mm -hmm. And um, love your neighbor, love your enemies. G.K. Chesterton says they are often the same people. That's why he reminds us of that. One of my favorite commandments he gives is to cultivate um, selective absent-mindedness. When you're giving charity, don't let your right hand, left hand know what your right hand is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got, oh, and don't put your light under a bush, bushel. Let your light shine before men. Uh, the commandments that he gives us are full of joy. And what the child does is obey the father. And the father lets his rain fall on the just and the unjust. So we too should be open to all people. So there are a lot of commandments to look for. That might be a fun thing to do as you read the Bible during the Easter season. Look for some of those commandments. And they tend to be commandments of joy. Paul reminds us, rejoice, rejoice. He says that quite rather often. And we're supposed to be witnessing to the joy of God. That's one of his commandments. And so his commandments, as he says, are not burdensome, even though take up your cross is one of those commandments. But then again, he says that, you know, we are to be yoked with him and his burden is light. So we're in for some fun and in for some surprises. And then our third reading is going to have Jesus taking on a persona. Well, we know Jesus was a carpenter uh, in the building trades by profession, um, but he imagines himself to be and claims to be a shepherd in the third reading. So think of Jesus as a shepherd. Jesus says, think of me. I'm thinking of myself as a shepherd. In these ways, I am like a shepherd. Well, Peter imagined himself being a, a competent public speaker as he spoke to the Sanhedrin. He had to put on a costume. He had to put on a persona. He had to take on a mission. He had to be a little different. And so those kinds of, that kind of uh, closed consciousness is as we do our closet cleaning in the spring. That closed consciousness is a, a handy thing to think about. I like to, I like to imagine myself as on a mission from God, as we all do. And um, at times, I can wear my cashmere sweater and hold my fine leather bag and be an ambassador of Christ. Um, acting like I know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and and at other times, uh, at other times I might be put into a situation where I, where I get to be God's secret agent mm -hmm. in in an unusual circumstance. So it's it's fun to think about how Lent leads us to grow in holiness, and how the Easter season leads us to consciousness of our mission. So this is a time of joy. Be glad, rejoice. Um, if you'd like to join Bible study, we don't have lunch every day, but we do sometimes. <laughs> and, uh, so um, uh, contact me, Bible study at olwparish.org, and I'll, I can sign you up for our Zoom meeting. So blessings and peace.